All right, hey watch fam, welcome to the channel. This is Jimmy from J Will Studios and today I am super excited to talk to y'all about the 2024 state of the collection. So this is my collection going into the 2024 year. Uh, if you watched this last year, if you're a fan of my channel, I did a uh, state of the collection at the beginning of last year, uh, but I am going to go with a slightly different approach this year and keep it focused on the new additions. Uh, I've added quite a bit over the last year. Uh, don't worry, I'll still get some great shots of all the watches, but I think I can do better than a 45 minute video that I produced last year. So I would love to keep this one about 25 minutes or under 25 minutes is the goal. Uh, secondly, I received quite a few requests to share my collecting philosophy. When I go through this video, I am going to do it a little bit different and, and, and share a little bit more around my collecting philosophy. That way, if you're looking to build a collection, no matter what your price point, I would love this to share some of the things that I look at and some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. So with that said, I'll be sharing a few filters that I use when considering what to add next to my as you can see, ever growing collection. With that said, I know there's always a handful of people who say consolidate and get the, the best watch you can afford. While I do not hate that logic, I just hate that logic for me. I love experiencing different brands. I now have the opportunity to share those experience with a small audience now that I've hit 1200 subscribers. So therefore, if you like this video or any of my other videos that I've done, please drop a comment and take a moment to subscribe. It really does go a long way and it really means a lot that this watch nerd has a growing audience to talk about watches with. Lastly, quick note before we jump into the video, uh, currently my Jage Lecoultre Navy Seal Diver is unfortunately out at the watch doctor. I had to send it off. I wanna say I sent it off in October. My dual met came back pretty fast. This one looked like it's gonna be a little bit slower, but hey, it is what it is. So let's jump into the state of my collection and a few filters that I use that may help you build a collection that suit your needs and tastes. So now that I've been collecting a while, I've grown more appreciation to having a variety of complications. In the early days, I was very brand focused. The last five to six years, I've really been focused on getting diversity in color, numerals and hands in each of my favorite complications within my collection budget. My first love in watch collecting was always thinking of different complications and how mechanical watches can pull off some amazing feats. And you know, the last, you know, again, five to six years, I really began to diversify the collection. So my first filter is just complications. If it's a new complication, it's definitely something uh, that I'm extremely interested in. Or if it's a new complication, first time from a brand, Last year, I added a few new divers to the collection. I am not a huge diver guy per se, but I do like, you know, these Seiko divers. So the Seikos were both end of the year acquisitions for me. I was looking to get more personality in my in my diver assortment. Uh, I recently acquired this Seiko Captain Willard uh, at a good friend of mine's wedding reception. This is a very cool tool watch and it gives me an olive green dial with this fun red dot on the second hand. This watch also got a ton of pedigree and history, stalked and well-known amongst us watch nerds. At, is it a cool movie that appeared? Apocalypse Now, and you know, is nicknamed the Captain Willard. So I've been looking at one of the Captain Willards for a while, and I would say that that was probably inspired when I first saw the new Seiko Prospect GMTs. I just did a review on that watch. I picked up the Save the Ocean GMT. I wanted a diver with modern materials, but didn't want a classic look. I really enjoy this glacier blue dial, and I think it just looks stunning. It's the, in my opinion, the closest you can get to Grand Seiko without spending Grand Seiko money. And Seiko did a great thing here. I believe this is the first ceramic bezel on a Seiko Prospect diver, and it looks really incredible. It definitely elevates the look of the watch and the bezel as i referred to in my video is silky silky smooth i also added the young hollands max bill chronoscope uh, i wanted a wider silver dial chronograph back in the collection and i was missing my iwc portugueser i was eyeballing a new variance with the see-through case back in the in-house movement but finally got hands-on with a max bill and i fell in love with it i actually think this watch is everything that the iwc really wanted to be but the iwc is a little bit more dressy young hollands is just really almost perfection. One of my favorite chronographs and this watch is a strap monster. Another watch that I've reviewed earlier in the year as well. And a new complication, you know, that I was able to add to my collection without breaking the bank was the 
Mito Multi 4 TV Big Date. This gives me a big date complication in the collection without going uh, Glass Chute Original. One day I will own a Glass Chute Original, but there are so many brands. I don't know where that is going to fall in the rankings. This is actually a really sweet looking watch that I actually wear quite often. I don't wear it on a bracelet a ton, but I think it looks great on this killer yellow strap. And these are two watches, both the Young Hans and the Mito. Great ways and introductory ways for me to get into German watchmaking without spending a ton of money on, an, on a Langa or a Glass Shooter Rangido to get some very substantial complications. So my next filter when I'm considering what I'll add to the collection, I love having different dial colors in my collection. I don't mind multiple blue, black, or white dials, but typically there have to be something distinct or some differences in wearability. Uh, but speaking of dials, I hadn't had something like this and this Cartier Calibre de Cartier, this is the 38 millimeter version. So Cartier makes a 42 millimeter version. This is the 38 with the rose gold, so the two-tone case. I actually really adore this watch. I did get rid of my Kermit. I needed to get liquid for that. And this was just a great piece to swap out and get a little bit cash. And I actually find myself wearing this on a variety of different straps and really love the way it looked. I also thought it'd be a great companion for my Cartier Santos that I picked up at the end of 2022 to kind of celebrate Christmas. Uh, and as I told y'all in my video last year, the Girard Perigold went away to fund the Santos. I did a, a early purchase, but I couldn't resist it. End up selling it, the Girard Perigold, but I have not regretted that, not looking back because I really do enjoy my Santos. I, I actually added this sweet citizen. I love the yellow dial and it allowed me to scratch that integrated bracelet look without spending a ton of money. This is another area that I was super excited about adding some color in the collection. I don't know how often I'll wear a yellow watch, but I have actually enjoyed wearing this one on the wrist. It's super comfortable, and I don't have to worry about where I'm at when I have it on. So when I think about dials, I also like to go after different numeral layouts. Uh, my favorite numeral configuration is the 12, 9, 6, and 3. Uh, that is featured on a JLC. But over the years, I've been really just finding different unique ways that, you know, field watches display numerals. So I have a couple at the SUF and I have the Ferrer that have different dial layouts with different numeral patterns on it, which I think is pretty cool. This is one thing that I, I, I like to try to figure out, like if there's a different uh, way that they uh, manufacture use numerals, that's enough variety for me to where I don't have a lot of overlap. I'm a big fan of field watches, as you can see. And I recently, last year around the summer, picked up the Humboldt GMT in white. I have it on the bracelet and my daughter got me a really sweet orange strap for it for Christmas. So I have a couple different strap options. This is one of the sweetest white dial watches that I've seen. I love the splash of orange. I love that it's a sandwich dial and it's not a direct clone of the Rolex Explorer 2, but I am a huge Oak and Oscar fan. If you haven't uh, heard that before on this channel, I don't really put them in a micro brand space. I kind of consider them more independent, made here in America. And I think Chase and the team is doing some really great work there. So this was an easy decision and one that has stay in my collection now that I own it for a while. I am still on the hunt for a blue dial Jackson and any color Sanford. Hopefully when one becomes available, I'll have the money to be able to pull the trigger. So speaking of unique watches, this was a really fun watch I picked up at the, actually at the beginning of last year. So I, I want to say I picked this up sometime in February of last year. I was browsing the forum. I've always wanted a Dietrich and I'm hoping I'm saying the, the name right. They have the organic time. They have a, a really uh, amazing top tier line that I think they did a limited run for a couple years ago. But this particular one, the DD1 sits right towards the upper end of their collection. It is an all Swiss movement. So you're getting an ETA 2842-2. And you know, what a unique way. They didn't do a skeleton watch, but you get to see the jewels from a, a, a backward, uh, from the back, which I think is really unique. This is also a really cool looking dial. I can understand that this will not be a watch that is for everyone, but I really love the look. It looks way more expensive than what it retails for. And this watch definitely bumps it significantly above, uh, significantly above its weight class. But I really like these cathedral hands and something that you don't see on watches at this price point, this curved and bent second hand to give the watch additional depth. I thought the counterbalance looked really cool. And this was a watch that spoke to me. I actually wear it quite often uh, to my surprise as it goes, you know, I'm a casual dresser most days, t-shirt and jeans guy. And this always look amazing. So my third filter that I use, uh, and this is 
obviously a cliche. You'll probably see this if you've ever asked a watch collector what watches you add to your collection. You're bound to see a post to say buy what you like. Uh, that is essentially what I do. I, I buy what I like. I know that's a cliche. It's not saying that I'm not immune to the hype train. I definitely have a few impulse purchases based on internet hype. But overall, I buy what I love. I've always been drawn to experiencing different brands. But this represents some of my favorite brands. Jaja Lacotre with my favorite brand being front and center in this particular case. This year, I was able to add another diver to my collection that I had been looking for for a long time. I was super excited to source the original Planet Ocean. Uh, mine came with the mint bracelet, box, and papers, but I've been exclusively wearing it on this black and orange NATO for the most part. This was the Planet Ocean that was worn in the first Casino Royale, so Daniel Craig's first James Bond movie. And in my opinion, I think it's the best reference. I've owned a couple different Planet Oceans in the past. However, they're always a little bit thick. This one comes in 14 and a half millimeters versus the 16 that I believe that's on the new Planet Ocean models. And again, looks incredible. This is the one that I should have got from the beginning. And now that I have it in my collection, uh, it'll probably stay for a significant amount of time. Lastly, I traded my SBGN003, so my Grand Seiko GNT. I had an opportunity to own my personal favorite Tudor Black Bay 58, and that is the 925 Silver. I first got hands on with this in Greenville at the Reeds Jewelry Store. And then later again, I saw one at a uh, Greenville watch group gathering down in Greenville, South Carolina, a great group of guys down there. And I had a chance to try it on. I've never been a fan of divers below 40 millimeters, but the dimensions of the Tudor Black Bay 58 looks great. And something about this warm dowel, I actually don't think I would want this in any other size. The silver is perfect, is unique. It gives me a different material to add to my collection, which is another filter that I got. And, you know, I have a couple different divers. This one kind of sits on a class on his own currently wearing this on a olive green and yellow uh erica original strap that i think looks killer just as good as if i bought it on a nato i did get the one that's on the brown strap and i did review that watch earlier this year so my other filters i like to have fun i don't take myself too seriously when it comes to collecting watches i have amassed a pretty decent sized collection over the years just by really buying watches that speak to me ones that i like no matter the price point or the brand uh, underneath 12 o'clock. I understand the investment and the resale aspect of collecting or you know that's, that's a part of this hobby and I get it. But for me, that can never get in the way of enjoying the people and artistry this hobby brings together. And I just find that independent brands like Oak and Oscar, uh, I'm gonna say Christopher Ward's independent, Ferrer, uh, you know, these these brands are doing some crazy fun things with dials that you don't see from the more established brands. And every now and then I want something that's going to be, you know, a little bit different that I won't see on every risk. And these watches allow me to get that experience of owning something that's almost bespoke. Uh, my first Oak and Oscar, there's only 300. The Humboldt was the first mass produced Oak and Oscar, but it's still not a watch that you're going to see just walking around anywhere and is a great conversation piece. Another fun watch for me, these are a few watches that let me have fun no matter the price point. One of my favorite watches to wear just on a quick weekend. I like the way it looks. Makes me feel fancy even though it's probably my cheapest watch in the collection and that is the Timex Q and Go with the blue dial. And it, again, it's just a fun watch dual uh time zone bezel so if i want to track a different time zone i can and another watch that i can go anywhere you can never go wrong with a timex if you're limited on your watch budget i would definitely direct you to look at timex they make some really great looking watches and they are a brand that you know has dominated the affordable space for a long time so last filter for me watches hold more than monetary value these four would remain in the collection no matter what no they're far from the fanciest watches in my collection but ones that hold the most value to me. The Frederic Constant has been in my collection for over five years now and was a birthday slash 10th anniversary gift for my wife. It was also the first video I did on this channel and that was before my kids hijacked my first YouTube channel. I think my first review was the Hoffman Race Time Diver that did pretty well. The Belova that's in silver here is coming up on 15 years old and was my wedding watch. My wife and I had just got married and was going to our honeymoon in Chicago. Mind you, we were 23, 24 at the time, so I didn't have a lot of money. I had a few cheap watches that I got from like the bodega stores, but 
broke them after like a week or two. I remember this being on sale and I picked it up from Macy's. I want to say it's like $124. My wife wanted me to have a nice watch to wear with my new peacoat as we were going to Chicago. And fun fact, I think the peacoat costs more than a watch. My Seiko Presage, I, I had in the collection last year as well. This was a gift from my team in South Carolina. And this will always have a special place in my collection. These are extremely rare and a little bit hard to, to come by now. And I just really love uh, Seiko's execution of this green dial. Just another testament that you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to get a great watch in your collection. And lastly, the story that I told last year, so I won't rehash it, uh, but this vintage blue tag 1000 course diver this has now been in my collection going on eight years at this point i believe uh, this was gifted to me by a friend that i work with during my days at cabela's uh when he passed away uh, we used to talk about watches all the time and this was one that he wanted me to have and i definitely make sure that every year it gets worn and and put to good use so all right watch fam thank you for clicking on the video thank you for checking this out hopefully my filters can help you build a little bit more eclectic collection one that speaks to you uh i've been collecting almost for about 20 years now uh collecting watches of some sort and have made tons of mistakes over the over the years but i think i got my collection in a place to where you know i'm really happy uh i'm not looking to move off any pieces per se i'm at this point looking to add a few more you know grill status pieces so i think i've been talking about a moser Centre seconds for a long time. We'll see if this is the year it's in the cards. Uh, I do have a big milestone birthday this year. So maybe that AP that I've been chasing for a long time. Uh, but we shall see. But with that, please, please, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. This is Jimmy from J Will Studios signing off. And I will see you all soon.